medical school acceptance rates you need to know to get accepted. Hey, BMO Nation, welcome to another episode of our One Question Podcast. My name is Ronza, and I'm joined by my colleague, Meng. Hi, everyone. Now, we have nothing to sell you. It's just pure strategies and tips so that everyone has equal access to education. In case you've never watched or listened to one of these before, they are completely unscripted. There's no fancy music, audio, visual, any effects of that nature. It's just pure content. We have 10 minutes to tackle a topic each week. And this week's topic is medical school acceptance rates you need to know to get accepted. All right, so timer is on. Now, this one could be a little bit challenging, and that's precisely because, yes, applying to medical school is daunting. There's a lot that goes into it before you even get to the application stage, which is what we want to emphasize here. And precisely because it really does impact you in the application stage, and even more so, it impacts your ability to get accepted to a school. So what do we mean by that? Well, first and foremost, if you're applying to medical school, you need to do research, right? You need to look into the requirements. You need to look into the programs. You need to see where um, you're eligible. You need to see uh, where it's even feasible before you even start to entertain the idea of applying to a program. Now, most of you, if you're applying within um, American schools uh, outside of Texas, you're going to be going to MSAR. Others of you, you know, if you're Canadians, you're applying to uh, directly to the program website or you're going into OMSAS if it's within Ontario, uh, you're going to be researching. So when you look at a program, you're going to have to look at a lot of different components. Precisely if they provided the statistics, which for MSAR they have, the acceptance rates, right? So you're going to see statistics for um, at success rate uh, for in-state versus out of state. You're going to see um, the averages for uh, the GPA and even the median range of past applicants. And then you're going to see that for MCAT. You're going to be seeing um, a lot of different uh, statistics and information, their mission. You're going to want to evaluate any sort of requirements or anything particular to that program. Now, there's a lot of information to break down here, Meng. So first and foremost, walk us into, you know, the really key acceptance rates that the, the students need to look for. And then why, why are those even important? And how does that relate to getting accepted? Mm -hmm. Well, um, let me just ground us in what acceptance rates we're actually looking at. Um, without giving a specific example, in the States, um, you know, they're often two, three percent acceptance rates, definitely usually not more than five percent. So what that means is, um, you know, if it's even at five percent, you're looking at one out of every 20 people um, getting accepted into that school. And obviously, if you're at two percent, that's one out of every 50 people who apply getting in. So that's just to help you gain a sense of what the acceptance rates even are. Uh, in Canada, sometimes it could be a little bit higher, um, maybe between five to 10%, uh, but there are also fewer schools in Canada to apply to, so you have much fewer options and a lot of schools have regional preferences for their candidates. So it could actually become more competitive depending on how you look at it and where you are. And um, so, so of course that means your application has to stand out no matter where you're applying to, but there's actually more nuances that Ronza had hinted at, right? Um, you could be looking at in-state or in-province versus out-of-state or out-of-province statistics, and those can differ quite a bit depending on what school you are applying to. So some schools you won't see much of a difference, but for other schools um, you will see a higher acceptance rate for in-state applicants and a lower acceptance rate for out-of-state applicants. So if you wanna maximize your chances, um, then you probably wanna to try to apply to at least some of the schools for which you yourself are an in-state applicant because that will increase your chances, right? You're competing for um, a, a larger number of seats, essentially, than, than you would be if you were applying as an out-of-state applicant to other schools. Um, so that's, 
I think probably the most important acceptance rate statistics you want to be looking at is the in-state versus out-of-state ones because it can make a huge difference in terms of your application to a school. And this, as Ronza said, all goes into the process of researching schools um, during the school selection uh, process. Absolutely. And uh, I think that this is something that a lot of students really rush at the beginning, and then it comes mm -hmm. to kind of hurt them in the end. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if there's not many seats reserved for out of province or out of state, that means, you know, it's highly more competitive. And then keep in mind that a lot of programs go with rolling admissions. So that means, you know, the probability of you getting accepted um, as an out of state or as an in state um, will decrease over time the longer that cycle is open. So you want to make sure that you start early, that you prepare everything and that you submit everything on time. Uh, now, in terms of, you know, I know we talked about and the, precisely this topic is about acceptance rate. I think we really want to also pivot away from the topic a little bit and talk about the other critical components that um, students need to really note down in addition to the acceptance rates because yes, you know, perhaps uh, they favor in state versus out of state, but what would you tell a student if they saw that and they said, I really still wanna to apply to this program, you know, what else can I do? How else can I strengthen and make sure that I get accepted? What's, what's you know, what's something that we always tell our students here, Mary? Mm -hmm. Well, um, in terms of, you know, still just looking at researching schools, um, making sure you have the best chances, uh, one thing you want to look at is what are the statistics for MCAT scores for matriculants or GPA scores for matriculants. Um, if you are at a stage in, you know, your considerations where you still have a chance to change either or both of those, then definitely work hard to ensure that your scores um, are at least meet the average of the matriculants who are in that specific category. So if you're, for example, applying to an out-of-state school, you know it's really, really competitive. Um, don't just look at the overall stats for that school. If you can, look at just the statistics for GPA, for MCAT, for the out-of-state applicants. And that's going to give you a more realistic idea of what your competition is and where you need to be to be competitive as an applicant. Right. But of course, outside of your numeric scores, which only tell one part of the story, they only talk, they only show the admissions committee about, um, you know, your academic abilities. You also want to be strengthening your applications in other ways by number one, again, looking for schools that are looking for your specific background, your strengths, your types of experiences that will complement and contribute to their program. And then once you've identified those schools, really highlight those types of things in your application um, to increase your visibility to the admissions committee. Wonderful points here. So to really sum it all up, you guys, like, you know, don't feel defeated. Make sure that you do your research. Make sure that, you know, you really look to see what are your chances in terms of, you know, depending on where you are. If the stu if, you know, if it's even considering in-state, a lot of times there are different requirements and different eligibilities within the states. So if it's out of state, in-state, out of province, in-state, wherever the favor, you know, favoritism goes in terms of the seats reserved, that really gives you kind of like a compass, a guide, a reality check of really what I'm looking at. But then following that, see where else, what other components you can play on, ensuring where you can be competitive and play on those strengths, right? So making sure that you look at a program holistically, but those key, those key, those key statistics really give you kind of like a reality check, would you say, Meng? Because it gives you really an understanding mm -hmm. of, oh, okay, so I could be competitive, but like realistically, this is what, how many they like to reserve seats for when it comes to out of state. This is how many. And then looking at how competitive am I in MCAT. And then you have a really good understanding of how competitive you are for that program. And this is not to say, hey, you know, at that point, do not apply, but it gives you an understanding of how many of those schools do you have on your list? Are they all truly too competitive? Or are you within the average? And then you can kind of prioritize in terms of what schools you'd be applying for. And if you know you include some of those potentially a bit challenging schools, that's okay. 
But, you know, just keep in mind when it comes to the application, you don't want to have too many of those on your list because, you know, what are your chances? But then also the time that's going to go into it is going to be compromised and you don't want to hurt your chances for the other programs that, you know, you might really have a chance in or there's more probability, there's more seats reserved. It's a bigger program. Uh, so lots to consider there. And that actually brings us to our time here. So, you know, thank you so much for watching or listening. Now, if you like this as much as we enjoyed making it for you, you can go ahead and share it with a friend. Subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. And of course, ask any questions that you might have in the comment section. See you next time. Bye, everyone.